The following program has been brought to you by Tiger Media Net. That program being, it came from the DVD collection. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm John Billinger and this is... I'm Connor Keating. And today we are going to be talking about the 1957 classic science fiction film, The Land Unknown. (sighs) Okay, actually this movie puts the ass in classic because this movie was awful (laughs) like i actually hated this movie yeah and for the record this was his idea right so the entire i don't know pitch for this particular review was hey we did a classic universal's monster movie last time invisible man yeah so this time let's do one of their lesser known monster movies and i had these two different sci-fi sets um you know we have a total of 10 different options um he could have picked, you know, like the first the first DVD's got some awesome stuff like um, Tarantula, Monolith Monsters, Incredible Shrinking Man. Um, but no, instead he said, let's do The Land Unknown. So he is entirely responsible uh, for this, for making, for making us watch this. <laughs> Listen, um, I first heard about this movie when I was like nine years old on that. I think what we talked about this before, there was a video on YouTube called mm-hmm. The History of Dinosaurs and Movies or whatever, and it had this movie, and then I looked up the trailer, and I was like, oh, I want to watch that one of these days. So, yeah, this was <laughs> uh, it was me trying to fulfill, uh, fulfill uh, 14 years of uh, curiosity of what this movie was like. Yeah. So, you know, that... Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunate. Yeah, I just, um, this. Pro- I have to say, the movie looked a lot better when I was 10. Yeah. Or 9 or whatever. Whenever you saw the video. I, I mean, I thought, hey, you know, it looks cool, but now it's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> I probably would have hated this movie when I was a kid as well. Yeah, I just got this, um, on DVD. It came in a set with other stuff like, uh, The Deadly Mantis, Leech Women, Cult of the Cobra, you know, a lot of, a lot of great classic films. Um, and then, like, this was also one of the ones that I was, like, most excited to see, because it's like, oh, it's a cool dinosaur movie. Uh, no, it's, <sighs> it's a very, uh, slow movie. It's certainly not one of the worst dinosaur movies I've ever seen. It ain't as bad as the last two Jurassic Park movies. <laughs> mean Jurassic it's... World movies? Yeah, whatever. But, um, it's still, um, very boring, slow hard to get through movie okay um let's give some general background on this movie this movie is about a art an expedition to the arctic in the 1950s see 10 years earlier there was the big 1947 arctic expedition and he discovered hot warm water in antarctica so they were like well let's investigate that so they head out there and there's this helicopter crew that goes out into Antarctica, and they discover this big hole in the ground. They go through the hole in the ground, and they discover this prehistoric uh, vista with a bunch of prehistoric dinosaurs. Their helicopter gets uh, damaged, and they pretty much spend a lot of the movie by the helicopter. There's a bunch of dinosaurs just roam around them. Dinosaurs? Uh, I think you mean guys in, let's be honest, pretty bad monster suits, and then also giant lizards. Yeah, they use uh, footage of li- like lizards that they... Uh... Have your screen projection, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, continue with your synopsis. And then there's this, there's this castaway. I guess he was like he was stranded there from the 1947. I think expedition. it's a different expedition. Or like, yeah. I think the 1940s is a real expedition. That's their educational segment. Okay. And then he's from a totally different thing. Okay, to be honest, I was kind of brain dead halfway <laughs> through this movie. Yeah. So. Yeah. Once you get to the castaway guy, it just it goes down. It goes downhill. Anyway. uh... He's been there for, like, years and years and years. I don't remember how long. And, um, he, he's like, hey, you know, my expedition, we used the same type of helicopter that you guys broke. I'll give you the part in exchange if you let us, if you let me have, like, your, your, your lady scientist with yeah, you. Yeah, because there's a, the, yeah. crew, the crew is, um, four different people. Four You've different got people. the pilot. Um, I forget what the other guy is, but then there's the, like the the captain, and there's oh some, he's a scientist, and there's a guy, lady and scientist, a lady scientist, and he yeah. uh, he's like, 
I want I want that lady scientist. You know, I'll give you the part if if you let me have her, and <laughs> have her stay with me for like forever. And this takes up a good amount of the running. Pretty much, running, just, pretty much the second time. half of the film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know the the crew is like, no, you can't. And so well, then it, we'll, we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, and then it just becomes a big war for her, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um. Got some background information on the production. Mm -hmm. uh, this is sourced from IMDb. I'm going to read this directly. This was originally set to be an expensive sci-fi epic shot in color with a large cast and Jack Arnold directing. Jack Arnold is best known for being the director of movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Incredible Shrinking Man, and uh, It Came from Outer Space. Yeah, so, those are like actually those are actually good movies right there. Like yeah. that's those are solid. You want to watch some 50 Mons movies? Go watch those. Those yeah. are the great 50s. Pretty Mons solid uh, 1950s director. Mm -hmm. uh, Arnold actually began pre production work when Universal decided to slash the budget, shoot it in black and white <laughs> instead of color, and changed and reduced the cast, turning it from a big budget A picture to a low budget B picture. Arnold withdrew from the project, and Universal assigned, to it, assigned it to one of its contract players, Virgil W. Vogel. Let's see what he did. You keep him. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, the story was inspired by the uh, discovery of uh, how in 1947, during the uh, 47 expedition, there was an area of inexplicably warm water in Antarctica. And, oh, apparently the T-Rex head was used to create spot from the stairs of the Munster house on the show The Munsters. So, there hmm. you go. Uh, yeah, this guy... The only other thing of note that he directed was The Mole People, which is on the uh, other box set uh, for yeah. this Universal Monsters collection. Thing. And is that a good movie? No, it's quite terrible. Um, well, we'll have to watch it one no, of these days. No, we don't. Uh, I gave it a 3 out of 10. <laughs> we don't have to watch that. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk... Now that we've given some more background information on the movie itself, let's talk more about the story. And in particular, I want to talk about that Horrible castaway character. Oh, yeah. I hated this guy. I hated, hated, both, both hated, of, hated this guy. Both of us were collectively ticked off that he did, wasn't just what that. It wasn't just like, oh, you can come with us, Mister Castaway. No, instead he's like, I want to stay here, and you give me the lady to stay here with me. And it's just like, just take him with you. And should we spoil the ending? Why not? <laughs> they take him with them anyway. They 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 rescue yeah. him. Uh, well. He does kind of redeem himself. He, they give him the lady. Put some quotes around that. Yeah, it's of. weird. I, they give him the lady. He's like, nah, I'm going to bring the lady to him. And then once he does that, Plesiosaur, or Lasmosaur, sorry, Lasmosaur comes in, uh, knocks over his boat, and then they rescue him with, like, the, you know, the rescue um, buoy thing. And, um... I hated this character. Yeah, and so it, it doesn't so much. matter. Like, None he... Of it mattered. <laughs> He is causing this whole thing. He's like he jerk. is just keeping this story from being concluded sooner. Like they would get out of this sooner if he wasn't being such an How idiot. How long is this movie? It was too long. Seventy-eight minutes. <laughs> just a little over. Forty an hour. minutes too long. <laughs> okay, this should have been like a half-hour special <laughs> with this guy because oh my god, oh my god, and the woman. Go, decides to go along with it at the end. <laughs> no, she's actually championing it the entire time. She's like, oh, just let me do it. And they're like, no, we're not going to stay with the creepy guy. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> this guy, oh, God. And I think, he, okay, I think the reason he wants to stay there is because well, he's a he crazy wants, castaway. He wants like, to kill all the dinosaurs. Right? Is that, was that his thing? I think. I thought he was controlling them with his horn, his conch shell. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that, yeah. yeah he's Throughout like the, in the early part horn. of the movie, the T-Rex is getting ready to kill the expedition team. Then you hear a... And then the T-Rex goes away. And they're like, what the hell was that? And, you're, and he asked me, he's like, was that the soundtrack? W is that the sound messing up? I'm like, no, that's just part of the movie. I'll, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, because it made no sense. Mm -hmm. I was just like, what? What is I'm that? I'm pretty sure that was my exact same reaction when I first saw it. I was like, is this, is this the soundtrack? Like, what is that? It, and it, yeah, and then you find out later, it's this, it's this castaway guy. He has, like, this conch shell that he turned into some kind of, like, I don't know, like, 
blow well, it's horn an annoying or... horn, basically. <laughs> yeah, or it's like one of those like dog whistle type. Yeah, things. basically. But for dinosaurs, but you can hear the sound, and it's so an- I hated that thing every time it showed up <laughs> because it was so annoying. You just stop the movie, you just hear. <laughs> oh God. That character. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. What about the other characters? I think they're all just kind they're all just all very the other boring, characters are just stuck. Lame. And I think well, can we spoil the fact that um none of them die? Yeah, none yeah, of these nothing... characters die. There's so, like no stakes to this thing. Yeah, at there's all. no stakes. Um if you want like, you know, any sort of like monster action, like yeah, there's monster stuff. But like, you know, nothing like um I mean I don't mean to sound mean. But, you know, in a monster movie, at least somebody gets... Somebody bites it. Yeah, it's like, come on, let the... I don't know, let, the pilot let, die. Well, the pilot's kind of necessary. Let, let the other guy die. What did he do? The repairman. I don't even remember. I he, think... he clearly was terrible at repairing the plane or the <laughs> helicopter. So, yeah, let him die. Or let the castaway die. That, I would have liked Honestly, that if he yeah. got ripped apart by a bunch of, like, I don't know... Velociraptors by or lizards, T-Rexes by lizards, <laughs> by the generic monitor lizards. Oh god! Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the dinosaurs in the movie. Uh, yeah. You had the T Rex. There which are was five, this... five different dinosaurs. Well, technically six. But two of them are lizards. Five different dinosaurs in total. Yeah, you got the crappy T Rex suit. You got yeah, the, the T-Rex suit. It's like this ginormous. Like he's like standing upright. He's got an oversized head, undersized feet. He's got elephant feet. Uh, yeah. It's just a very... It's kind of a cool design uh, for an old school monster for like, for like a cheesy... In a yeah, cheesy for, in a way. cheesy way. You know, uh, probably yeah. the only thing I like about the movie. Yeah. Uh, the Elasmosaur Which puppet, is this awful, It's pretty awful bad looking. Puppet. It's only like the front half, I assume, because most of it's underwater. So it's only got these big, giant, oversized front two flippers. flippers um, and then it's got this weird lipstick-looking head. It looks like, uh, like, a, like one of those... Um, m- Big fancy merry-go-rounds, but like a dragon. Yeah. So it's got a very silly face. It looks like something you'd see at like an amusement park. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes Reptilicus looks like it was designed by <laughs> Jim Henson. Dude, it it makes me uh, appreciate the Elasmosaur from Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds a lot more. Like, holy crap. Um, okay, and now let's talk about the and then, well, then what the trailer calls the. Stegosauri, which is not the actual name. It's that's not how you say that, right? Stegosaurus, yeah. It's Stegosaurus, but they're then they're not Stegosaurus. They're they're giant monitor lizards, or Komodo dragons, or whatever. Yeah, and they didn't even take the time. They didn't even do what like the Lost World, the '60s one did, where they glued like fins on. These are just. Yeah. By the way, lizards. this is like before, like I don't know, like PETA. Yeah. Or so the, anything like so that. So the monitor lizards, we literally get to watch one of them brutally murder the other one on yeah. camera. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the last dinosaur is there's. I like to imagine that they had like multiple like lizards <laughs> like on standby in case that shot like was terrible. They were like, all right, let's have. How a- many lizards do you think were killed in this? Oh God. Um, Not enough. Yeah, but then, then I'm joking. The, by the way, I'm joking. About the last dinosaur is just like a pterosaur that we see twice. Oh yeah, and it's like three it, times. It crashes into the helicopter. It there's a dead one, and then we see it like just fly over briefly yeah and it looks like just some like static model or something yeah it's like not that. an and, like, impressive the few scenes you effect. see of it it's nowhere for how it, crappy... it's mostly like sh- clouded in the fog yeah for how crappy the ple- the elasmosaur and um t-rex are uh yeah they they definitely put a lot more effort into those than the um than the pterosaur yeah and then there's the uh the plant monster plant monster yeah, yeah. that uh you know tries to kill a lady so, doesn't you know. do anything really to be honest it kills that monkey it kills the little it monkey. Kills a monkey yeah <laughs> that's the that's the one um you know non-monster death in the whole movie is this plant killing this monkey <sighs> not actually i should spe- pre- uh, specify this since you know they killed the last animal um but this monkey i assume does not actually die um, they totally killed that monkey. <laughs> okay, killed the monkey. I, I have low standards in this production. Okay, yeah. like I don't think these the people uh, Virgil Vogel had. It came in contact. Very big standards. It came in contact thing. with the dry ice they were using in the plant, and it just like <laughs> gave it hypothermia. Oh god! Or like choked to death on like the carbon choked to death on the on the smoke. Yeah. Oh my god. Um. 
So yeah, would you prefer with the monitor lizards going back to them? Would you have preferred them gluing like spikes on them, like they did in the Lost World and so many other movies? Or? Yeah, but at the same time, I also just prefer if they just made um, dinosaur puppets, uh, or like a stop motion thing. Yeah, like even just a marionette yeah. of like Maybe a, st- cra- a crappy Stegosaurus marionette would be. Better than, you know, just maybe, seeing monitor lizards. Maybe that's what they time. originally wanted to do. With something stop motion. That actually makes sense. If they wanted to do this it originally was, with stop motion. Uh, it was going to be like in color. I mean, maybe. We'll never know. I'm trying to think. Um, Shrinking Man. It came that's from like an alternate, space. alternate universe. So I will What, never what know. was his other movie? Creature. Creature. Um, yeah. I don't know if it would be stop motion. But yeah, I think certainly... Um, Higher quality practical effects. Because all those movies have pretty good effects. Yeah. It definitely would be held in higher regard <laughs> than this thing. Yeah. You think he was still would have had that uh, creepy the castaway? Creepy castaway? I think so, but at the same time, I think it would have been handled a little bit better. Um, because, like, most of the, like, the other movies there, um, though aside from Creature of the Black Lagoon, it's kind of okay, but, like, in Shr- Shrinking Man and um, It Came From Outer Space... Both have, like, really strong human narratives, I would say. Um, and they're just, like, very interesting sci-fi concepts. Whereas this, there is no interesting sci-fi concept. It's kind of a rip-off of The Land That Time Forgot. Yeah. By Edgar Rice Burroughs. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, Which, that story, uh, for those who don't know, is also about a group of explorers who find a... Not explorers. It's more like they well, act. Yeah. It's a it's a rush or a German U boat that gets taken over by some British people, and then they find an uh, an island with dinosaurs, and then yeah, they screw around there for a while. Yeah, um, we might review that the movie adaptation yes, of that one day. The seventies movie of that is actually great. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw that. That's a much better uh, people on an uh, on an island with dinosaur movie. Check that one out. Not this movie. Yeah, or you know, check out the Lost World as well. The nineteen, 19- either the, the original... nineteen twenty five version or the nineteen sixty version. I actually have not. Both seen of those that. versions are way better than this movie. I have not even seen the sixties one. I think this whole thing. It's like we're just recommending better movies. Better to watch movies. Yeah, watch Jurassic thing. Park as well. That's a good one. Um... You know, while you're at it, you know, branch out. Watch uh, Citizen Kane. Yeah. Or, uh, um... Wizard of Oz or Gone with the Wind. High and low. Just, just watch anything else than the land, than the land unknown. The land unknown. Ex- and except Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Watch this over yeah. Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom and Dominion. Don't watch Dominion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you know, since it recently won an Academy Award, Godzilla minus one. Watch, watch that one as well. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the acting in the movie. Uh, it's it, pretty, it's pretty su- stand- it's subpar for yeah. a fifties monster movie. It's what you expect. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not anything spectacular. Yeah, nobody really acts like they're really there, except for that castaway. I think the castaway, he his performance isn't actually that bad. He does good at being a crazy castaway. Creep. I think it's more just like the story and maybe like his um, you know, his dialogue itself yeah. that really hurts his character. Yeah, I don't really want to hate on any of the actors because it's like they're they're, they're, they're probably just contract players, you know, they didn't probably have much of a choice or much of a say in this yeah, whole they, thing. Yeah. They just got the script, said the lines, got paid. Yeah. And if they got as long as they got paid, you know, good so for them. Didn't, wasn't it that the lady didn't even scream when the plant got her? Didn't I didn't I mention that while we were watching this together? I don't remember. Again, I was kind of brain dead. <laughs> I don't even. I mean, that pretty, happens at the end of the movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the lady, like when she gets grabbed by the plant, like, she really even... gets grabbed by that thing like multiple times throughout the movie. I don't think she really even screams in this movie. Uh, I don't remember. I think I mentioned in the. In Should the we watch giant... this movie again? No. Ju- okay. I no, mentioned no. in the giant claw thing is like, oh, it's refreshing that the lady in that doesn't scream a lot. But in this, I don't know. Yeah. I kind of came out the same year. I kind of expected yeah. this to have a bit more lady screen. Hey, there you go. Another movie you should watch instead of giant this. The Giant Claw. Claw. <laughs> yeah. And that's a movie you can actually laugh with. Yeah, this movie is and just... not be like, oh, no. Oh, no. It's a much faster paced movie. It doesn't have anything, like, really weird, like the the creepy castaway. Creepy castaway. Yeah, that's a much faster paced movie, whereas this is pretty stinking slow. Oh god, it it's really boring. Mm-hmm. This one is 
It's like moves at a prehistoric snail's pace. Not I quite would say. Planet Di- Planet of the Dinosaur boring, but really close. Um, um, Planet of the Dinosaurs. Not oh a good movie. There. Yeah, there are a lot of bad dinosaur movies, aren't there? There is a better movie for you to watch. Planet of the Dinosaurs. I would not. Okay, I would no, watch no. this over Planet don't, of Dinosaurs. Don't don't watch Planet of the Dinosaurs. Though that does have better effects. That I one, yeah, that. yeah, that one they did stop motion. Yeah. In fact, that one they actually they spent all the budget on the stop motion. They couldn't pay any of the actors. <laughs> like if I understand this correctly, that one, the, the the actors had to like sign like deferments or something like that, like stipulating that they would get paid when the movie got released. And then it. And the movie never got released. Never got a theatrical release. Yeah. So the actors never got paid, <laughs> which is, uh... That's a good idea. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no, it's really good, you know? Uh, good, good contract idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay you when it's in theaters, <laughs> and then never put it in theaters. Straight to DVD. Yes, yeah, straight to uh, DVD, or straight to VHS. Yeah, back back to Land Unknown. Is there really anything more to say about this movie? We kind of just... We kind of hit the effects. We've hit, um... Ooh, should we talk about the way this movie ends... Because the ending, like, really, like... Well, I think we already mentioned that. You know, they, ca- they rescue No, I'm not. I'm talking about they get out of there, but then there's, like, the last second, like, extra bit of danger. I don't remember what that was. Basically... <laughs> Did the they... volcano explode? No, the volcano doesn't explode. Okay. They get out... Well, I don't remember. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember explodes. the ending. But I remember this. I remember the rest they, of the they, they, get, they get out of there... They head to like their the, the battleship. Oh yeah, they crash their helicopter. And then the helicopter crashes they... into the water. And they have like some stock footage from like I don't know the Korean War there or something of a helicopter crashing yeah, in the water. I, I... And then they they the the people on the battleship fish them out. And then the end. That's right. They're in hype. They're in like hypothermia inducing water, and they just sw- casually swim. Boo. Everybody is no. in pretty normal clothing for being in. For being on a boat in the Arctic Sea. Yeah, and like the last shot of the movie is like the guy and the girl, not the creepy guy, not the but creepy like guy. One, like the captain I think or whatever. Yeah, the he's with guy. the girl and they're just like standing on like the balcony of the ship and they're just wearing like the same clothes. I mean, like, okay, in real life they would be they, like yeah, in the pretty they, cold. They would be like in the ship's infirmary or something yeah. like that. Or more it, realistically, if they actually did get in that water, they would they would be instantly go into shock <laughs> because of how cold that water is. Yeah, and I, I like to think that this movie was entirely like, or at least they chose that particular helicopter because they had this. Uh, they had that stock, stock footage. footage. Of the, they're like, this is a really cool stock footage. Let's put that at the end. Yeah, I'm. I'm assuming it was stock footage. I don't. I, I doubt that they would have no. actually have filmed. They the had. Crash. They had the tiny helicopter, and then they had the um, interior. Uh, you know the crappy interior set. Yeah. Speaking of the sets, like most of the sets of the, of the jungle is just shrouded in fog. Yeah. So Probably because you couldn't see. Honestly, much of it, it, the sets weren't that bad. It does look kind of cool. It looks, but... it looks. It's got a cool vibe to it. It doesn't look too bad. It's not like as bad as like King Dinosaur, where they're just at a park and they're playing it off as an alien planet. That's another. That's another terrible dinosaur movie. Okay, this isn't the worst dinosaur movie out there, but it's pretty. But dreadful. you still shouldn't see it. Don't watch this movie. All right. Well, I am. I have no idea what else there is to really no, talk about it's, this thing. Yeah, it's pretty miserable. Um, not. Yeah, there really isn't much to the movie. People crash. They find a crazy guy. They find dinosaurs. They leave. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, what rating would you give this movie? I'd give it a four out of ten. It's got. It's got some certain charm to it. Um, with the dinosaur stuff. But at the same time, no, this is a pretty miserable movie. But there are worse dinosaur movies out there. I'm going to give this movie a 1 out of 10. Out this of is 10. probably the worst movie we've seen so far. This is definitely the worst movie As we've seen so far. As part of this yeah. thing. This is so... This movie was so dreadful. Yeah. Oh my god. But that's... Okay, really all that we have to say about this movie. <laughs> Again, this movie is like... This... Yeah, there isn't even much to it. This is a movie you watch at like two a.m. when you're drunk, and then like the next morning you don't remember a thing <laughs> you about it. You can't remember it. Okay, and then like the rest of your life you might like Dude, remember we, like we were even bits drunk, of it. and we can't remember this movie. Yeah, it's like well, we remember more about the movie because you know we have the yeah, best thing. But I still like the second half is a blur. Oh God, it is so so boring. This movie. All right, well, I think that's basically all that we have to say about the 1957. 
the land unknown. Yep. Um, the poster is way better than the actual poster. Movie. It does have a pretty sweet poster. I swear. It's like, a lot of these 50s movies, uh, like, the posters are way better than the movie. Yeah. Um, like, Robot Monster, for example. Robot Monster's got a cool poster. Um, Creature Walks Among Us has Creature a better Walks poster than the actual movie. It's like, uh... So yeah, um, don't watch the movie. Check out the poster though. Poster's a work of art. Get the poster. Buy the poster. Put it on your wall. Oh, people will come over. Hey, what was this movie? Is it good? No. Well, I haven't even seen it. <laughs> the poster is pretty, pretty kick ass. All right. Well, that's about it for us. Join us next time where we tackle the. Well, uh, the brand new Godzilla and X-Kong. King Kong movie. Yeah, yeah, Godzilla and King Kong movie. Check out that one, you know, and we'll and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah, because we have thoughts. Anyway, that's about it for us. Uh, do you have any final? No. All right. Well, goodbye. This podcast was hosted and produced by John Billinger and Connor Keaton. The movie covered the land unknown is the property of Universal Studios. This has been a Tiger Media Net production.